hey. <laughs> Surprise. Anyway, this week we're back to finish a little what we started last week, which was um, we did a lot of that tea stain rose patina, which was really acrylic paint over top of the brass. Well, we're not really going to do a lot more patina this week or color this week, but instead I am going to show you bit by bit how to roll that big cuff blank, which is this. I don't know, Javi, don't even try to zero in on it because I'm afraid that it's <laughs> going to blur. We don't want to lose anybody right in the beginning of the video. But this pretty ornate uh, finding, I'm going to show you how to roll it with your fingers against the table to make a perfectly formed cuff. You don't need a barbell, you don't need a ball bat, you don't need a bracelet mandrel, you don't need anything but your fingers and a little bit of elbow grease and you'll get it bent beautifully. And then, after that, I'm going to show you something really fascinating. Brassy Steamington is a pal of mine and she is the steampunk queen. And she wrote a fantastic blog post that I'm going to have linked on a blog post that I do with these components that I'm going to do either late tonight or tomorrow that talked about looking for the stamping inside a stamping. And this piece is perfect for that. Ingrid Anderson of Lily's Gems did it this week and shared a picture with us at the Bisu Boutique's creative group. So I'm going to kind of Base what I'm going to show you a little bit on what Ingrid did, and then I'm going to take it another step, and I'm going to show you how to bend part of that so that you would get a set of a necklace and a hand flower bracelet. Whoa. There are so many things that you can do with brass stampings to change them up with simply cutting them with the metal shears. So I'm going to show you that, and uh, also how to roll the bracelet in this installation of a Bisu and Donna jewelry making video. So like we always say, get on over here have and we'll fun. show you how to do it. Okay, so we have the cuff flat from last week that we worked on with our tea stain patina. And you can see that I've done some extra things to it. I put a little bit of patina gilders paste over it. I also did some espresso alcohol ink. So you can build color up in layers and just distress in between. Go as far as you want until you feel it's done. And I thought this was, and then I bent it. And as you can see, I've got a nice cuff from it. Is that coming up good and clear, Javi? Is it in the right place? Okay, so everybody can see it. And then what you could have done too is maybe drill out a hole here and a hole here. Attach a bit of chain, maybe a little pearl drop, lobster claw glass, so it'll stay on your wrist nice. You could bend it, you know, however you need to bend it to fit you. And I'm going to show you how you can do that with just your hands. No bracelet mandrel, no ball bat, no barbell, no nothing, okay? So all you do, this is right in the middle there, honey. We're going to have to make marks. Start in the middle and just begin to bend with your fingers. And honestly, you can do this. I'm a very weak person. I don't have a lot of physical strength, and it's it's not that hard for me. You just need a hard table, and I have some plastic down so I don't mar my table. And just keep bending. Just keep pressing against the round spots and the stamping. Just keep going, and keep going, keep going. Keep pressing. Just moving. But it's not really difficult. No, obviously. just just move your just you know just move your fingers out your thumbs and press against the hard edge of the table. As you can see, I'm already getting a nice arc. Okay. You just sort of change the placement of mm -hmm. your thumbs. And just keep moving your thumbs and keep mm -hmm. moving and working it out. I think I can do that, Brenda. Oh, you can absolutely do it, Don. You're gonna be doing lots of these for the shop. Maybe when we get our Etsy store going. We have a Ruby Lane store already. I'll have to put that link on for you sometime because a lot of our video pieces are in there. But you can see I'm getting this nice and round. So now it's time to move out to the very end. And I'm getting at the very end and then I'm bending up with my fingers and pushing. Bending up and pushing, bending up and pushing. Pushing. Pushing, 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 pushing. See, Donna? You know what? I, I And just rock it. Rock and roll that brass, baby. 
I'm not even afraid to attempt it. Mm -mm. You know? No, it's you're not so going to ruin anything. No. You won't ruin anything. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I've done a smaller piece like that, but, so but even that hurt. large of a size is no problem. I can see mm -mm. that. Just press with your fingers. Mm -hmm. That hurt me. Make a little mark. It's not big still. Okay. So this is just, you know, and then, you know, maybe you'll press a little, a little bit here and a little bit here. You know, you just keep working it till you get it. But you can see it is not going to take you long. You could get your bail making pliers out and, you know, give yourself a little help here and there if you need to. But I did these, all these three today and I didn't need a bill making pliers. Now I've done four. No, you don't need it with this mm -mm. piece. I'll still work on that a little bit, yeah, but you can see that's all there is to it, to bend that to get it the way you want. And like I say, uh, to make the bracelet, it probably would be better to drill out your ends here first. You know, or hole punch them. If you, if you want to hole punch them, you, you really wouldn't have to. You could do it after. If you're going to use a drill press or drill, it'd probably be easier to do it while it was still flat. Um, but, you know. I could still do this with my drill, but um, yeah, we'll probably just use the hole punch on that. So simple, nothing to it. I'll show you another example of how you can take a brass stamping and bend it to make something else. Um, this bracelet, I'm not sure if I we worked on this together last week or not. I might have started it. This is torch patina over raw brass luggage tag. I blogged at, about the luggage tag stamping this week as well as did an ideas newsletter on Wednesday. If you get my newsletter you've seen it. Um, I did sideways. I went sideways with this and then I, I uh, actually attached with a cold connection, a rivet, a little bezel there and I built my collage into the bezel and let it spill out over the surface there. And then I added part of the little spoon finding as a connector and came around and linked it. And there you go. Here's a piece already bent that I did. Now I'm going to show you how I do it. So I'm going to do it for you. And once again, I'm going to start at the narrow end with my fingers. And this one is a little bit tougher because you've got a lot of filled in section here, so it's more rigid. But you can still totally do it. Just you know, protect your work surface first so that you don't ding it up, unless it's something you don't care about, of course. And you just bend it until it's going to fit your wrist. Or whosoever wrist that you're making it for. Oh, I don't believe it. Your phone's going on. I had it off and then I turned it back on. I thought we had the video. But done. you can see how this goes. Well, they can enjoy the good, the bad, and the ugly for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't like that movie? <laughs> uh, I, had this, get that. I had the same ringtone. You need to get it done. Well, I'm going to shut it off. Oh, okay. I don't want it to happen again. Okay. But you guys can see how this went. Okay? That's all it was. Just bend it. And, of course, I would patina that first and colorize it first. And, and I would probably um, put my bezel on there first before I bend it. And you could still bend it with the bezel on but that's what I did. That's all there is to it. You know, if you want to do it that way, you could just do it plain. You could do it with something else on it. You could engrave it. You could do tissue decoupage. You could do all kinds of stuff. So basically, that's how bending those pieces goes. And we've had other videos about it, but this one is so simple. And a lot of people get so tripped up by these big cuff flats because they think, oh, geez, you know, I'm going to have to... You know, you don't need special tools. It's your fingers. Okay? So we have those at bsuboutiques.com where all this good stuff comes from. CUFF09815 is Raw Brass. CK05506 is Chocolate Kiss, which is this one. And we're going to be talking why is this cut in a minute. Um, ACP05504 is the Aqua Copper Patina Brass. And we're going to be cutting this in a, in a moment. This is the Brass Ox. B R O X O one two two one, and I'm going to show you why this is cut up in a minute. But first, I'm going to show you this picture. I'm trying to get these out of the way. 
This picture, are you getting that heavy, that blur? That's good. This is from Ingrid Anderson of Lily's Gems. She shared it with us at the Bisu Boutique's creative group this week. And it's an example of looking for a stamping inside of stamping. Okay, which Ingrid's been doing this particular piece for a while. She totally inspired me. Another thing that inspired me so much is my friend Brassy Stimmington wrote a fabulous, brilliant piece this week, a tutorial on how to look for a stamping inside a stamping. In other words, using a stamping different ways. A woman that I respect very, very much in this business uh, gave me a phone call this week. Besides Brassy, I also respect her very much and she's a dear friend. But another lady I know whose family has been in this business of making stampings for 110 years. She called me and she said, learn to use a stamping 10 different ways. Now there's a challenge for you, but we can because we can look for stampings inside of stamping. And I will post Brassy's blog post on my blog probably tomorrow along with close-up pictures of some of these pieces we're going to do. But I'm going to show you how to look for a piece within a piece. Just basic stuff. Brassy Use, really has an yeah. eye for, she, she's, for she, she does. Has, she has, a lot she's a steampunk her. queen. She's she got it all going on. Just a classy person. Anyway, so what we're going to do, and thank you, Ingrid, too, for sharing the photo. Fabulous, fabulous piece. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what I did with that. Okay, first of all, in brass socks, I made a necklace a little bit like Ingrid's by taking the flat and cutting it. You see it has the beaded edge here. You getting that good, Javi? So the beaded edge is right along here. And I cut it, I drilled it here, I drilled it here, and I drilled it at the bottom. And then I added some of this nice etched Rolo chain that just came in. This is some of the nicest Rolo chain I've ever had. It's all soldered links. Um, it's CHN07502. I put that on there. And you know, I could even do a little bit of patina up over here, because what I did is I went over the brass ox with a little bit of white and patina color gilder's paste on a brush and you know you can do that you can add color over the brass ox finish it works very well so uh, that's what I did on this one and then on the other piece that I cut out from this piece this side I got this piece right here you can see how it was cut right here and then it was bent drilled out here drilled out here and drilled here so that I can so put this way I can make a hand flower bracelet from that piece. And it's got a very pronounced Art Nouveau look to the top of it now. And then what you're going to want is bend this little tip here out a little bit so that it doesn't stab you when you move your hand around. Just bend it out a little bit. I'll show you when we do it. Okay? Because we're going to do it. Our, we're, we're going to do it. Here it is in Chocolate Kiss. I did it. I didn't drill it yet. Can you get that, Javi? Kind of good. Okay, this chocolate kiss finish is really cool. It's like an uh, antique copper with brown and bronze over it. And I've distressed this to reveal the highlights. It's the most awesome chocolate finish you have ever, ever seen. So you might want to try that. That's CK05506. Okay, so all that remains is for me to cut this for you. So let me get this stuff out of the way. And I'm going to need my metal shears. These are the ones that we sell at the website. I don't know if I can these ones. My friends Linda and Opie O'Brien turned me on to these a while back. And so now I have to find my metal. There's my metal. There's that beaded edge. Of course, you don't want to go through the middle of that. That's not going to look good. So you have to cut into it here. And then up a little bit so that you'll get around it. Okay, then we're going to get the other side cut into it, cut into it, and then up around. You see, Donna? I'm just thinking how maneuverable those, those shears are. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, they work really well. They are. I'm so surprised. And the last time I did so this, easily. it just broke apart. So we'll see if we have that kind of success. Now I'm going to bend it. Just kind of ease it back and forth to see where it's at. 
And this is where you kind of have to play with it. I got a flat nose here. I'm going to kind of bend this out my way maybe a little bit. Last time I did this, it was yeah, easier. Yeah, just snap. Yeah. yeah. They, it, this this, this, moved, this one will too. Yeah. Okay. And it came right apart with just a little bit of manipulation. Okay, so now we've got rough edges, don't we? So what are we going to do about that? This came off pretty clean. It's not going to need a lot of trimming. So I'll pull this out here and here. Okay. But it is a little rough. Um, I don't think I'd trim that off. I, I like that like that. It just needs filed. Okay. This could stand a little trimming. Let's see if I can get it. Sometimes it's hard to get in there. Look, you can see I've had these for a while. They've been used. A puppy need to be replaced. They last a good long time, though, and they only cost like um, $15.95. No, that's not fair. This is going to have to be filed down. So when you file, guys, there are many, many ways to file, and I am not the queen of filing, okay? I just do it and it works for me. So if you have a better way, that's good. I have a great big old Stanley file and I don't want to salt your ears too much, but I'm going to file one way and get that rough stuff off. Shouldn't take too much doing. And, you know, I'll work at this later on afterwards. You see, it's already get good. And if you have better ways to file and you want to leave a comment with a suggestion of how to do it or how you do it, that would be very nice as long as you leave a kind comment. Hint, hint. <laughs> this is YouTube after all. So kindness is a nice thing. That's pretty nice and smooth now. Okay, now there's a little bit of roughness here. I'm going to bend that out. I bought a book by Thomas Mann about using the jeweler's saw that I just love and there's some section on filing in there and uh, I took a class with Thomas Mann one time I was completely unqualified for it because I am not a metal smith nor will I ever be but I am delighted to have had the experience he is the master and he uses a great big brooch file and he goes up and around like this so I will have to review that if I ever learn how to do it well enough, I'll share it with you. These are fairly soft now. Now, this is my little trick. I use zero, 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 quadruple aught, four aught steel wool. And when I'm done, and this saves filing time. Now, this is catching, which means I've still got some stuff that needs to come off with the file. This is a good idea. I didn't know you could use this. Yeah. But um, when you've got most of your debris off of it, you can do some finishing with the steel wool and it'll be soft as a feather. It's just as nice can be. But this will take a little bit of time, so I'm not going to stand here and make you watch all that. But I'm just showing you basically go get some zero, 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 four zeros. Extra fine steel wool. Same thing here. This has been debrided pretty well with that um, file, so. It's almost like you're distressing it, which I basically am because I'm removing the color. This is this is great. This is perfect. A little bit of roughness right here that I'll take care of later. That's it. It's just as soft as can be. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and use that. I can drill it if I want. Or you could go through these holes. You could drill the bottom and hang some stuff. This piece was the piece that I used for the hand flower. Now, how do I bend it to make it like this? Well, simple. I'm just going to go from this side. And just work across it. Then come the other side. And work across that. You see, Donna? It's not hard at all. Because one day Donna is going to be doing her own videos. Oh, she's yeah. not shy. I'm not shy. No, she's not shy. We don't care. Just turn the camera you on. It's like time. we're talking to you. It's like you're here. Yeah, we just want to help It's like you. if you walked in the shop. You can learn what see? not to do or what to do. See how, on. so maybe I'll put it on this hand. You can see better. Pull my sleeve up. See how it's starting to fit my hand? Okay. I 
can't tell you how much I like that separated. I mean, yeah, I mean you get just, okay. I so think I think in this this aqua copper it's eight ninety five for this. You can say, wow, that's a lot for stamping. Is it really? It's five inches across, guys. It's uh, two and a half inches wide of brass made with a Victorian die in the United States. It's rich low brass. It has premium price. plating on it yeah. because we don't sell garbage plating. I'll just tell you that right up front. I know what garbage plating is because I've had plenty of it, and I don't have it anymore, and I won't sell it to you either. This is an artisan finish that we offer at this time. And then what I do at the bottom is I just kind of pick that up a little bit so that it doesn't stab me on my wrist. I'll keep working with that, but it's going to fit just fine until I'm done. It's just using my hands and the hard edge of a table, and then I'll have something to work with. See, this one's already bent better. You know, where's the brass socks one? This one's really bent well. I got that one done more. I've got all kinds of stuff to work with now. Just tons of stuff to work with. Out of one stamping. Which, if you buy it in the raw brass, or you have one already to work with in your stash uh, in raw brass, um, you're going to get, um, and you add your own color, you're going to get $30, $35 for this if you don't even do anything else but just drill it out and put... Uh, a chain and a little tiny drop of some kind of cute thing and a nice lobster claw class. We have swivel ones now too. In fact, this one here is a swivel and that's awesome because uh, it'll just move around with you. I don't know if you can see that. But I anyway, think the next thing I make is going to be yeah. utilizing that, that yeah. piece right there. Yeah, but see this is looking for the stamping within the stamping. Think of 10 different ways you could use a stamping. Now, this, this luggage tag, I probably have used 10 different ways done because I love that piece. That's a, a favorite of mine, and I've used it for years and years and years. But this one, I don't think I'm done with this one yet. I think, you know, you could, um, you could cut right along in here, and then you could take this out and this out, leave this sticking up for, you know, a design piece. And take that out all together and have a heart shape. Ah uh ha -huh. Right here. On Brassie's blog, she even has the stampings marked with a pen so you could see how to cut them out. But like I might take and cut just cut that all out right along in here and up along like that and just have this up in the middle. I have like a heart shape. Hmm. Very see, nice. the more I look at this, the more I see possibilities. So go for it, guys. Look for the stamping inside the stamping. Realize that manipulating brass is not hard. You can do it. I did it this time without tools. I enjoyed sharing this with you. I hope you did, too. And we can't wait to get back with you again next time. I'm hoping to make a video next week. I have to have a tooth extraction. So it depends on how that goes. It's earlier in the week. And I'm um, going to do it. Yeah, Donna's doing I'm it. Filmed. She's going to do it with these. Ever seen Mo, Larry, and Curly? Yeah. Remember when they used to do the tooth extraction? Yeah, that was yeah, fun. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. No, we're not doing that. Okay. Anyway, um, so we'll see how I'm doing, and I uh, hope to have a video for you next weekend. And we're going to do some tissue decoupage where we talk more about these pieces that we did last week. And I did tissue decoupage on here with the Seven Gypsies tissue paper that we sell at bisuboutiques.com. So I'm going to tell you more about this. I'm just getting this started, so I've got a long way to go yet on this. But uh, we'll talk more about it next week, and you're going to love that video. There is one already in my videos. Um, if you want to go back maybe about a year and a half, you'll find a tissue decoupage video that you can refer to for now, but we're going to do a better one. So, See you next time, and go crazy being creative.